Hi, everybody. This is Father Bill Holtzinger, and this is your Friday Reflection. And boy, am I excited because something amazing has happened. Yesterday, SpaceX launched the Starship. That's right, not the Starship Enterprise, but just what they call the Starship. And it was on what they call their super heavy rocket. It was amazing. It was so exciting. So I got up in the morning, and I watched this. I it was supposed to happen two, two days earlier. It didn't happen. And then finally... And it launched slowly and then pretty quickly and then just took off. And pretty soon you could just people in the background from SpaceX were just going crazy. They're so excited. And I was excited as I kept going. It uh, then hit what's called Max Q, which is the maximum air pressure exhibited on the rocket. And then it was supposed to then have what's called, uh, you know, a separation from the first stage, the main part of the rocket. And then Starship was going to continue on. But as it was supposed to do that, it started to tumble of all things. It went head over engine, head over engine, the top over this, the bottom. Several times I'm like, what's going on? This doesn't seem right. Is this a new maneuver for stage separation? I don't know. It was crazy. And eventually uh, they were saying something wasn't quite right. And then out of nowhere, boom, it just disintegrated. It was crazy. If I said crazy enough, but it was crazy. Yes. Well, they described that as, <laughs> they call it rud, rapid, unscheduled disassembly. Right. Well, what they actually had to do is they recognized that the rocket was now out of control, uh, and, of course, the Starship was doomed. So at the last minute, they hit a self-destruct button, which caused it to just completely explode and disassemble, right? Or just go boom, right? Uh, it was amazing. So, But they were screaming excited at the SpaceX because it met one of the most important criteria, what they needed, which was just to lift off. And not explode on the, the launch pad. Uh, Elon Musk was saying, what is success is not destroying the launch pad. But, well, it did a lot of damage to the launch pad nonetheless. And as it took off, it did get over the whole uh, the uh, launch tower and all these other things that it could have run into. It didn't explode to, uh, when it was there because it was like some 24 miles up into the air when this happened. Uh, but it was just exciting. It was wonderful. This is the most powerful rocket ever made and this is intended to go to the moon eventually and it is intended to then help humanity go to mars in fact that's kind of the goal the bottom line goal now why do i say this why am i so excited because i have a special love for astronomy and all these things of space right i'm excited i'm being an evangelist i'm telling you about what i'm excited about and you're being nice and you're listening to this but you're not like mad at me or i think i'm a jerk because i like this right well this is what we need to be doing when it comes to our faith, right? We need to be excited about our faith. What's more important than a rocket? Well, Jesus is much more important than that, right? He, he, he stopped this whole deadly cycle of us dying forever, right? He became human. God the Father gave us his son. He suffered for us so that we can know that he knows what it's like. He, can, he took on our sins. He died. He crushed them through death and then rose again from the dead. He rose he, alive again, right? So that we could also be no longer captured by sin and death ourselves, that we could ascend out of our death into a new life in heaven with our Lord. That's the greatest That's the greatest news ever, right? We should share this, right? Well, what's interesting is a rocket is a type of missile. And the word missile is something that needs to go on, go somewhere. It's on mission. These are the same word. Like SpaceX's starship on the super heavy needed to go somewhere. It didn't quite make it. It exploded, right? It's supposed to go all the way around the earth and land in, in the water in Hawaii. It didn't make it, right? But it was the first step, right? And that's what we need to do. Maybe, maybe you're afraid of, of talking about your faith. I'm just asking that you be excited about your faith and share that with people. You can just, when something good happens, say, praise God. And that's amazing. What a miracle. Thank you, God. Or God bless you. There's just so many things we can do to introduce God back into the conversation. Simple things. And SpaceX didn't start with the super heavy there. They didn't start with the Starship. They had smaller rockets and even smaller than the smaller rockets to figure out how things go. And that's what we need to do. We need to be that kind of person who will go out and make just little steps in sharing our faith. Because this is great news. SpaceX is wonderful news, but we have the greatest news ever. 
the, I, I bring this also up because on Thursday, I mentioned this in the homily, Thursday morning mass. And in the scriptures, this is in Acts 5, uh, the verses were 27 through 33, where the Sanhedrin was talking, really chiding the apostles because they just escaped from jail after being jailed. Uh, God miraculously released them from jail, unloosened the uh, gates, and of course, they, they went out and went per- preaching the gospel in the, in the temple area, right? And they were told not to do this, and here they were, right? Well, when brought before the Sanhedrin, Peter said this, we must obey God rather than man. In other words, we need to obey God's rules. His, his love and his, his, his Holy Spirit is so potent in our lives that we must express this. You've ever been in love? When you were first in love, didn't you want to tell everybody? Yeah, and for some people it may have seemed like, oh yeah, okay, right, right. I, love looks really crazy from the outside sometimes, right? Well, yeah, it does. But that doesn't mean it's not real. That means it's something that we need to be sharing with people. We need to share the greatest love ever. That's Jesus, who suffered and died and rose for us. To go out like a missile, to go out on mission. That's what, by the way, we call it mass. There's a connection here. Mass comes from the last, the Latin words, ite mise est. Go out on mission, mise, missile, go out, go somewhere, have a destination. Seek out people. Seek out friends. Share your joy. Get together with other Christians who also believe and build each other up. We need to do this. There's a, a, a Catholic who's by themselves, a Christian who's by themselves. We cannot do this by ourselves. As a Catholic Christian, we need to be in communities. We have to be with each other. So I want to encourage you. There's a great place where you can do that. It's church. Go to church. Be with other people of, of like faith so they can build and build you up. But also, we go to Mass because it's not just us. It's also the scriptures proclaimed, the living word of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit. When it's shared, we hear, actually, that's God speaking to us. That's Jesus speaking his love words to us. He's the lover, and we're his beloved. And even more, we have the Eucharist, right? We have his very presence when we are given this. This is his body, right? Body, blood, soul, and divinity. And we get to touch him, and he touches us. And he vivifies us when we receive him. And then we're, again, called to go out, because that's the call at the end of the Mass, right? After we've received the word and uh, through the scriptures and the Eucharist, we go out and share this good news. Well, folks, this weekend, Deacon Brett's going to be speaking. He's going to be preaching the Gospels about the, the men, the disciples that were uh, on their way to Emmaus from Jerusalem and sad, and then Jesus appears to them and he tells them about himself and how all the scriptures, he opens their hearts to understand the scriptures that all of the Old Testament points to him and they were amazed and they returned back to the apostles back in Jerusalem. But before they did this, when Jesus was done talking to them, they had a meal together and at the breaking of the bread, right? At the Eucharist, the breaking of the bread, he disappeared from their sight and they returned. I can imagine their hearts were pumping. And I hope that our hearts are pumping when we uh, enkindle our faith and we come to Mass, when we go out and share this great news with each other. God bless you folks. I'll see you this weekend, and have a great day. Bye-bye.